The Tennessee Titans take the stage. Are they ready to compete for the AFC South crown? Will Levis break out? All that and more from the guy who knows this team the best on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson, as always, at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, so much for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We love our everydayers. We love it when you hit that subscribe button on YouTube. The thumbs up as well if you're having a good time. Of course, you, you can subscribe everywhere you listen to this podcast. Today, we have a very special guest from the network, host of Locked On Titans, Tyler Rowland. You can find him on Twitter at Tic Tac Titans. And he's always fired up about those Tennessee Titans. A really interesting year, Tyler. A transitional year for the Tennessee Titans. So uh, you were the guy to talk to about this team as we head into 2024 and what they might look like. Uh, but we got to start even before we talk about the players on the field. We got a new regime in town. Uh, last year, they brought in Rand Carthon as the new GM. Ousted uh, a pretty well-known head coach to bring in Brian Callahan as the new guy to run that team now for the Tennessee Titans in 2024. So before we get into, you know, a potential Will Levis breakout, we have to know what the new mindset of the Tennessee Titans are coming into this year. And Matt and I get asked all the time, Tyler, like, okay, oh, who's the next hot candidate? Who's going to be the next great head coach? And it's like, I have no idea. There's a couple guys you're like, I know that guy's name. That guy's got a famous last name. He seems like he'd be pretty good, but you really have no idea. So what are the early returns? What have you learned about Brian Callahan's um, system and Brian Callahan's entire, uh, you know, just game plan and organizational structure heading into his first season as head coach of the Tennessee Titans? Well, it definitely, I think the Titans as an organization, I think I've been a fan of this team and cover this team for five, six years now, been a fan of this team for 25 years and I'm a football junkie. Okay. So even when I'm nine, I'm paying close, close attention to everything. This team made a complete organizational shift starting last season, but it really kind of catalyzed this off season from what I would say is mom and pop shop to fortune 500 from main mm. street to wall street. So the Titans were one of the least advanced franchises in the league in analytics in sports science. And some of those key data points that other teams like San Francisco, like Los Angeles, where Rand Carthon, the Titans general manager has come from the, the Titans were not on that level with those teams in terms of the investment that they put in those departments how much they paid attention to those things. They were very much an old school organization behind the scenes as much as they were an old school approach on the field. So seeing them beef up their analytics department, seeing them beef up the sports science department, the strength and conditioning department, add more bodies, add new techno technology, add a new approach. That is the biggest kind of breath of fresh air for me. But you see that play out in the decisions they've made, like hiring Brian Callahan, who is very much a modern NFL coach. He cares about the data. He cares about the analytics. He wants to throw the ball and stop the pass, rather than Mike Vrabel, who was, we got to stop the run and we got to run the ball. That's what matters in football. And you look at the correlation between teams who play good pass defense and throw the ball, and then the other side of it with run defense and running the ball, over the past 10 years, it's not even close. The teams that pass the ball and defend the pass are the teams that win the most games. It, the, the data is there and available. So I, I just think the entire philosophical approach to football from an organizational standpoint at the top all the way down is the biggest change that the Titans have made this offseason. And you got to give credit to Amy Adams Strunk, the owner, for looking herself in the mirror and saying, hey, look at what these teams are doing. And I think having Chad Brinker, who came from the Packers, who's the assistant general manager, Rand Carthon, coming from San Francisco, and they had to be telling her like, hey, you guys aren't doing things here 
the way that other teams are doing them. The best teams in the league are doing them. So that's big. But for Callahan specifically, I'm just very excited about his approach because it's totally different from Mike Vrabel. Vrabel is, a, you know, a rough around the edges guy. He'll get into guy's ear. He, he's harsh on people. Um, very old school approach and mentality. Whereas Callahan is a much more laid back guy. And the players have been talking about that. They feel... You know, players have said they feel much more free to express themselves. They feel like they can be themselves more. I said all along last year when I wanted Mike Vrabel to be fired that Mike Vrabel is a good football coach. He should be coaching in the NFL. He can take over a program that's ready to win with veteran players and established talent. But when you look at where the Titans are at, he wasn't the right coach for them. So I'm just really happy with the total transformation that the Titans have made. And again, I got to give credit to controlling owner Amy Adams Strunk for putting her money where her mouth is after liquidating a bunch of assets for this new stadium to continue to pour money into developing these, you know, off the field aspects of the team. I think it's absolutely critical because the Titans have had good season over the last 25 years, but they've never really sustained success to the point where they got respect year in and year out. And I think making these changes behind the scenes should help them do that. Really well said, you know, speaking of Callahan, he comes over from the Bengals mm -hmm. and the Bengals, you talked a lot about progressive thinking in modern day NFL. And I think that's very apparent, you know, running an offense through Derrick Henry is, you know, kind of an old school way of doing things, obviously. Yeah. Now, my hunch is, well, I guess I'm going to ask you is Burrow in Cincinnati. It kind of has an old school approach to quarterbacking. It reminds me of Peyton Manning. Like I, I want things static. I want to read things out. I don't need all the bells and whistles. My mind is my greatest asset. I've got great receivers. And if you ask Levis to do that, I think you're barking up the wrong tree in year two, especially mm -hmm. his style of play. How do you think those things mesh? Well, I think it's funny that you bring up Peyton Manning because Brian Callahan really cut his teeth in the NFL working with Peyton Manning in Denver oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. those years. So there is a through line there uh, with Matthew Stafford in the middle of that as well. Look, yeah. I think you're right. I, and I think right now, early returns, we're just in summer practices, but mm -hmm. Levis has been a little late on certain things. He's got the freak arm talent. He's got good mobility. You know, he's not Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, but he's got good mobility as well. I kind of compare him to a Carson Wentz. I think Levis is kind of Carson Wentz. Wentzian with, with the good and the bad, quite honestly. Yeah. So one thing I would say, though, is Brian Callahan is known for adjusting. So in Cincinnati, they've had slow starts the past few years, and Callahan has overhauled the offense. They've gone from zone runs to more gap runs out of shotgun, and they, they've changed the offense enough in Cincinnati that I think that Callahan can mold and adjust to what his quarterback needs more than just keeping it what Peyton Manning wanted to do. But I think Levis, at his best, if he can catch up to speed, I mean, we're talking about 4.0 student, intelligent guy. He understands what's happening. It's just how quickly the mind and the body can talk to each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How quickly that can happen. So I think in the early infant stages, Callahan has shown that he has the ability to mold and adjust to what they need and what's best for Will Levis. But I think over time, if this partnership works out the next three years, we could get to a place in that you know third year of the Callahan Levis experience where Levis is one of those guys who can win the game with his mind and, and kind of transform into one of those guys. He'll never be Peyton Manning, maybe not even the Joe Burrow level, but I think he can get there to where it matches perfectly. But early on, I think Callahan has shown he can adjust enough to, to make it right for Will Levis early and then build to that. More with Tyler Rowland of Locked On Titans getting into the AFC South a little bit. Where the Titans are headed, where they should rank in that division in 2024. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Get $20 off for our listeners. Promo code in a minute. Uh, Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting those tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Killer last-minute deals, all-in prices. Views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes all the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Or I know the schedule has dropped. You're circling games on that NFL schedule. Yeah, of course, you can get those two at game time. Concerts, theater events, comedy shows, whatever it is near you, find those tickets and save up to 60% off buying those last minute tickets for sports, concerts, and comedy. All in prices. You see your total up front. No surprises at checkout. 
So take the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. You know, it's hard to project what a quarterback is going to be, but what did you see from Will Levis in his, his rookie season? The good and the bad. I mean, obviously, he throws four touchdowns. <laughs> was what was that? Uh, late October, early November. Yes. And you're like, what the heck? This the first time he steps on the football field, four touchdowns. It's like, wow. And then he goes on and, and it has, you know, uh, it takes him three more games to even throw another touchdown and, and has your typical rookie ups and downs the rest of the way. Um, it was really fun to see him burst on the scene, ended mm-hmm. up with. Uh, you know, uh, uh, an even four touchdowns to four interceptions the rest of the way after those first four touchdowns in that right. uh, in that game against the Falcons. Sub 60% completion percentage in the end, uh, you know, had some rough goes of it. W- w- was there like one big thing that stood out to you? Was like, this is why he's going to be the guy um, or something that's like, if he doesn't fix this, it- it's never going to happen. It's hero ball. It's hero ball. At the mm-hmm. end of the day, he's chucking it. He's not you know, taking the sack, he's getting the ball out, he's driving it downfield. And I think that Levis has two elite characteristics, two elite traits in the NFL right now. His release quickness and his velocity. Like those, he's a top 10, top five in the league in just those traits. It doesn't mean he's a top Mm -hmm. 10 quarterback or anything like that. I'm saying those two specific traits. So those things jump off the screen and they're incredible. The thing is, I think a lot of the flaws with Levis were exasperated by the surrounding talent. You had a coach that's only calling shot play, so of course his head is, I got to take the shots. We may not get this. The Titans couldn't do 10, 12 play drives down the field. They didn't have the offensive line, and they didn't have the separators. Their number two wide receiver was Nick Westbrook-Akine for most of the year. He could barely make, a, you know, should barely be on a roster, period, in the NFL. So without people who could win quickly to create a short passing game, and without an offensive line that could block without having six or seven guys in, they only had a few options to make explosive plays. So Levis just took every chance that he could. And I think some of the things that he does have to improve is there are a few examples in that Pittsburgh game. You take the deep route, you take the, you know, the alert route on the sideline on third and four while your slot wide receiver is running a slant wide open over the middle. You got to take that one right there. So it's about finding the balance of when to drive the ball down the field with your natural talent and when to just take what's there and keep the drive going. And I think having a quarterback whisperer and a guy who's worked with a ton of great quarterbacks like Brian Callahan will help that a ton. So you saw elite flashes of talent with the arm. The decision-making has to get better. And I think the coaching, but a better supporting cast around him will allow that decision-making to be better. But that's the big thing. If he doesn't process quick enough, he doesn't make better decisions, he doesn't learn how to tune that aggressiveness, then you're looking at the bad Josh Allen. You're looking at the bad Carson Wentz. You know what I mean? Like that's Jay Cutler is a guy who you could maybe talk about who had great arm talent but made some questionable decisions and mistakes. So he could be that or he could, you know, at his absolute peak best, you're looking at like, you know, Brett Favre, Matt Stafford type guy that he could be if if his mind catches up. So that you saw greatness, but it's all about, you know, the processing, the mental aspect, but he needs a better supporting cast or we're not going to get our answer. And I think that is a big thing and why the Titans spent so much money this year and what they did, because we got to know what we have in Will Levis before we can do anything else. So I think they've at least set him up to have a chance to show it. And even take it a step further, Tyler. I mean, as you know, this was maybe the most aggressive organization in the league when you consider mm-hmm. coaching changes, personnel, free agency, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they had a lot to spend, wholesale changes. And I always use the term the nest. You know, I mean, yes, I'm a little concerned about the right side of the O-line still, but yes. it was the worst O-line in the league. And if it can get the league average in one year and then take another right. step next year. And I mean, that's a huge step. And frankly, that's why you got daddy to come with you in Cleveland. He can work on the right <laughs> yes. side. You know, I mean, that's his job. But I think even if Levis fails, this is a tremendous landing spot for the next quarterback if he does mm-hmm. fail. I mean, you, everything else is in place to me except the right side of the line. And again, Daddy will get that fixed to some degree. Yeah, and we're seeing him bring in guys from Cleveland like a Jerron Christian and the Titans just signed. Leroy Watson, they traded a seventh-round pick for to bring him in. They go out and they sign Sadiq Charles as well. So they're out there grabbing Bill Callahan's favorite guys. 
Diana Rossini from The Athletic reported that J.C. Latham was Bill Callahan's favorite offensive tackle in the draft. Mm -hmm. Whether that's true or that's just something you say after that's the guy that you get, we won't know. But if we take it for face value, yeah. They've basically said, Rand Carthon said, like, hey, we're kind of letting Bill do what he wants on the O-line, which I think is the right thing. Yeah, is the right thing to do. But I agree with you in the sense that if things go terribly for Will Levis, like to the point where it's obvious he is not the answer Mm -hmm. going forward, what they've done in creating that nest for Will Levis is also create the nest for the next guy. So if they end up with a Carson Beck, a Jackson Dart, a Shadur Sanders, a, you know, whoever you want it to be in this. Dak you know. Prescott, who knows? <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Who you knows? Got, right. so, you can do whatever you want. Either way, I, I think you're right. Whether Levis is the guy or the next guy is the guy, you got to create an environment where they can have success. And the Titans simply didn't have that the last few years. So the aggressiveness, in my opinion, is born out of two things. One, what we just talked about, the necessity of creating a better environment for a quarterback. But two, because of the first round bus of the last, three, four years of John Robinson, there's no one to pay. There is no up-and-coming young guy who needs that money. So the Titans could afford to be that aggressive because there's nobody that they're going to like miss out on paying because they paid these guys, and they needed to do it to get answers for the football team. So regardless of whether it works out for Levis or it sets up for the next guy, the aggressiveness with the cap space and their situation – It was 100% the right thing to do. So, uh, you know, maybe a little overpay for Calvin Ridley a couple. You go out, you trade for Legereus Sneed. You pay Lloyd Cushenberry on the line. Like, I get that some of these things are maybe a little more than people expect, but you're always going to overpay a little in free agency Mm -hmm. or that kind of trade. That's just part part of the nature of it. And And you got Simmons locked up. and Yeah, Jeffrey Simmons is locked up. Landry's on a contract. And outside of that, You know, there's just really nobody who you're too concerned with having locked down. So this was the time to do it, and I think they spent their resources wisely with what they chose to do. Certainly a better surrounding cast. Uh, I want to get your predictions on the the Titans, where you think they're going to land here in uh, over under win total six and a half. But first, uh, I want to focus a little bit more on the draft. What was it like for Titans fans to go through that draft? Because there was, I, I I can't remember a more chalky, like mock draft pick, that deep in the first round, pick number seven, it, 100% of mock drafts had Joe Alt. There were Titans fans yeah. that were getting like <laughs> pre-made custom jerseys of Joe Alt and the Titans, right? And all of a sudden, two picks ahead of them, the 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 Chargers draft Joe Alt, uh, end up with a different offensive lineman. What was the vibe uh, around draft day from Titans fans when that happened? Because I'm sure there was some disappointment, even though, as you mentioned, that maybe they end up getting their guy actually uh, in, in the first round after all. Yeah, and, and and I will come out of the gate and say that I think I might have got that wrong. When the Titans were on the clock at seven, I thought Roma Dunze should have been the pick. Look, you could say they signed Calvin Ridley. They have Hopkins. Hopkins is going to be 32. Tyler Boyd wasn't signed yet, and he's going to be 30 anyways and is a full-time slot. Calvin Ridley's 29. Now, I think he's a little younger in football years because he missed that time. But that's still, you know, next year you're going to have three 30-year-old wide receivers and Hopkins is a free agent. Tyler Boyd will be all. So I thought going wide receiver would be the move. But J.C. Latham has been incredibly impressive so far. The custom-made sleds that Bill Callahan was in, involved in inventing. He's just moving it all over. They're trying to drag him off the field. He's out there three hours after practice working on technique in the rain on the field. And they're trying to drag him out. And as a, as a person who went through the Isaiah Wilson experience, Like, this is just an incredible (laughs) moment for me. So, will he work out? I don't know. But with the work ethic, the experience, and Bill Callahan, I think the Titans picked right with J.C. Latham early in the draft. And, yes, I was was the leader of the alt cult in Tennessee. I wanted Joe Alt, the consistency and the technique. I think that Joe Alt doesn't get credit for how he can improve as a player. People act like he's just ready-made. He's not going to get any better, any of that. But I think in the circumstance they were in, knowing what they knew about J.C. Latham, I think they did make the right pick. I do think, though, that so many Tennessee Titans fans were looking at Joe Alt or Malik Neighbors. You get, you know, the number one tackle or the explosive wide receiver, and that's what most Titans fans would say. You guys know, like I know, fans have the ability to be swayed pretty quickly. Once the guy holds up the Titans jersey, it's like, oh, this was the pick I wanted all along. Yes, we're in. So, that happened, so it's hard to like say they were upset. But I think there are some Titans fans, I would say maybe, you know, one and a half to two out of five who were like, man, you know, like I'm not angry, but man, I thought we were getting all I thought we were getting neighbors. And that 
week 18 win against Jacksonville that the Titans just had to win on the way out <laughs> and made them down at seven instead of six. But I think that ultimately it's like the Garth Brooks song, you know, you got to thank God for unanswered prayers. And I think there's a chance that J.C. Latham ends up as the better offensive tackle with Joe All All is the cleaner, safer, like Jake Matthews, Colton Miller. You know, I, I think that he's that kind of guy. Whereas Latham's skill set, he could be a Laramie Tunsil. You know, he could be not Trent Williams level, but, you know, just like a, a better, higher upside player. So I think the Titans may have ended up in a better situation by what happened. But I think there were a couple of fans out there that were a little disappointed that they they missed out on all or neighbors. But again, I, I think they had to have offensive tackle help. And with the way the draft went afterwards, I think it was right for them to make that decision and, and, and kind of pass on wide receiver. There are good wide receivers every year now. It might turn into running back in a decade. I, that's a different conversation for a different day. But uh, yeah, I, I think some fans were a little disappointed, but Latham has been incredible so far. So I, I think everybody's pretty much happy now. We'll finish it up momentarily with Tyler Rowland, passionate about those Tennessee Titans. Where's this team going in 2024? And can they compete for the title in the AFC South? Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Summertime means baseball. NBA finals are over. NBA draft, though, is coming. Guess what? You can find not only baseball game lines, you can find Major League Baseball draft lines, NBA draft lines, and, of course, NFL futures. Bet it all at FanDuel. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Yeah, that's 200 extra bucks to play with. Bet on everything from uh, who's going to hit the next one out of the park, who's going to get drafted in the NBA, and, of course, if your favorite team is going to win the Super Bowl in 2024. Offensive, defensive, rookies of the year. Yeah, all that and a whole lot more at FanDuel. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summertime bucket list. That is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I adore Latham. Did a lot of work on him. You know, the Steelers were in the tackle market as well. Yep, and the I thought power, the hands. Yeah, Ooh, I mean, he, there's man. a lot of tools there. I right. think it was the right pick. I don't love mm -hmm. that Alt's going to the right, Latham's going to the left, but again, that's, <laughs> right. that, that's Daddy Callahan's job, and that's why he's yeah. here. You mentioned Sneed, though. I want to switch this over to defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Sneed trade was big. I thought he was one of the top three or four corners in the league last year. They yep. also add a Wouzier sort of under the radar, mm -hmm. too. I mean, revamp their top two corners. Are you expecting a lot more man coverage? I mean, what what is this telling us? So Denard Wilson, the Titans' new defensive coordinator, has referenced mentors in his past like Greg Williams, like Todd Bowles. What, what does that aggressive. tell you? Aggressive. Yeah, blitz, They're going to blitz, blitz. blitz. They're going to be in your face. Denard Wilson said a couple of weeks ago, we're press or less. Like he wants people in the wide receiver's face. And Snead is probably the best press corner in the league. I, I mean, Patrick right there, yeah, is right, pretty yeah. good. He's right there. You know what I mean? And like you mentioned, Cheeto Awuze is, is another big physical corner. And then I want to mention the slot cornerback, Roger McCreary, who he's starting to get on that national radar, some of the national voices that we see that break down film. Roger McCreary, he's been miscast at times and had to play outside due to injuries, where his arm length and his general diminutive size just doesn't allow him to compete with those bigger-bodied contested catch receivers on the outside. But when he's in the slot, he, he is right in your face. I hate to get so reductive, but he's a dog. And the mm -hmm. Titans call it disciplined oh, yeah. a-holes with grit is what they call dog <laughs> uh, in Tennessee. So I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, I think the Titans are going to press a ton. I think they're going to try to disrupt timing. And I think while Harold Landry is a good B-plus edge rusher, Jeffrey Simmons can be an A, A-minus interior defensive lineman from a pass rush standpoint. They don't really have anybody else who you can rely on. Arden Key is a is a third rusher, not a secondary rusher. He's not a starter, in my opinion. So I think the pass rush could be lacking where the Titans in previous years had Danico Autry, who is one of the most underrated players in the league. So I think the, the Titans will rely on where in, in the past few years, they've been, hey, we're going to dominate up front with the pass rush and try to help our less talented secondary. This year they're saying, hey, we're going to have an uber-talented secondary and try to help our pass rush. My football philosophy as a man I lean pass rush. I want pass rush over defensive back help. 
So I would do it the other way, but we've seen it the other way for the Titans, so they're going to try it this way. I think Snead is going to be a great addition. I think Awuzie is is absolutely critical, too. They had huge, huge needs at wide receiver and cornerback, like critical DEFCON 5 needs at those positions, yeah, yeah. and they attacked them. So I do think the Titans' defense is going to be super aggressive. They're going to maybe not blitz a ton, but they're going to blitz from different places and do those simulated pressures where, you know, you drop back because Denard Wilson did just spend time with Mike McDonald in Baltimore. So I think he's going to take a little bit of that. He said, just because we're bringing pressure from different places doesn't always mean we're going to blitz in terms of bringing more than four. So I think they're going to bring four, but they're going to bring them from different places. Kenneth Murray was signed at linebacker, which I don't really like that signing. But if there's one thing that Kenneth Murray can do, it's get downhill and blitz. So I, I think they're going to be very aggressive. They're going to press. They're going to try to throw off timing. And uh, Denard Wilson is one of the more highly respected defensive coordinators in the league. And people see him as kind of like a, a potential D'Amico Ryan's type rise could come from him. So hopefully that does happen because it means the Titans defense uh, was much improved. But uh, yeah, I think you have a good read on what they're going to be doing going forward and why it all fits together. We were talking off the air, Tyler, uh, about Traylon Burks and, um, and you know, what it would take if he was potentially available in trade. You know, Matt Williamson covers the Steelers, and uh, the Steelers are, looking. Are, are flipping over rocks, looking for uh, potential mm -hmm. pass catchers there for that football yeah. team maybe this summer to add before training camp. Uh, and it kind of dawned on me, better draft pick. Traylon Burks or Doriel Green Beckham? Better career for the Tennessee Titans. Oh, there's been... You threw out Wilson I mean, too and Farley. I mean, there's been some rough. I was just lately. thinking wide receivers, but there's been some. There's yeah. been some <laughs> there by the uh, by the Tennessee Titans. Every team has their misses, by the way, but some famous ones for the Titans, especially when you trade away a guy like AJ Brown. Yeah, I mean, at, at this time, I, I mean, it, it's hard to say. Here's a stat for you that just kind of encapsulates the Traylon Burke situation. Taj, Traylon Burks has been in the league two years. Tajay Spears is a rookie third-round running back who played just last year. Spears already has more catches and more yards than <laughs> Traylon Burks in his career, which wow. is, is absurd. Um, I think that Burks would be a good buy-low option for a team like the Steelers, especially with Russell Wilson. He likes to throw the ball down the field, those jump balls. You know, kind of He could be like a Cortland Sutton type. He's not as good as Cortland Sutton, but I think they could have similar skill sets. The problem with Burks Chase here scenery is... can't hurt, you know? I yeah, mean, it, it, yeah. It, it can't. But Burks just has balance issues to me. That is the number one problem in his game. You know, he goes downfield. He goes to make these big catches. He got knocked out against Philadelphia, and that's not his fault. He got hit in the head. It was a dirty play. He gets knocked out. Not his fault. But he got a concussion in Pittsburgh last year where he just jumped for a ball and fell awkwardly. You know, he got hurt preseason in Minnesota on a deep route that he caught in the end zone. Nobody touched him, but he just you know, couldn't kind of get his legs together. It's like a baby deer. You know, they just can't adjust to how long and fast they are, and they're stumbly. And those stumbles allow him to, he had a big drop on a wide open pass against Houston last year down the field. He gets hurt a lot when he goes down the field. And if you look back at the college tape, that was a big miss for me. When you do your draft evaluations, I thought he could develop as a route runner, and he could be more of an in-breaking guy and, and turn into yards. He has not been good with yards after catch because his balance isn't good once he catches the ball. And he hasn't developed as a route runner, again, because I don't think his balance is very good and tempoing his speed and all of that. So uh, with Burks, I don't look at him as anything more than a wide receiver four. They may keep him around because, as we talked about, you could trade him for a fifth or sixth round pick. But when injuries happen with your older wide receiver group, do you really want to go to Nick Westbrook Akine, or would you rather just try to get some more out of Traylon Burks? So I think the Titans probably end up keeping him around. But at the end of the day, he's just never going to develop into the route runner that he needs to be to take that next step. So I don't ever see him as being more than like a wide receiver three or, you know, that backup outside receiver. He's really a, a six foot two gadget receiver is really what he needs yeah, to be. Yeah. And if you have a creative offensive play caller who can work him in, he'll be worth it. But I don't know how he'll ever turn into like a bona fide starting wide receiver you can count on. I just don't I just don't see it. And I personally, this is anecdotal, uh, but I personally don't think he's a guy who takes football very serious off the field. I don't I don't think that he's someone who's in peak shape. I don't mm -hmm. think he's someone who's in his playbook. There have been little interviews like on the side where he's like making jokes about younger wide receivers telling him where to line up. We saw last year Will Levis had to back him off the line of scrimmage to not get a penalty before a big completion to somebody else. Like, 
I just don't think he is mentally as locked in as you need to be. And it makes sense. A six foot two guy, been bigger and faster than everybody else. He wasn't a guy who practiced a ton in college. Like, you know, he he could get away with those things. And I just don't think he has the the psychotic drive that you have to be to be a high level professional athlete. Like I just don't, I just don't think it's there for him. And again, that's anecdotal. That's about him personally. I don't know the guy, but that's just over the last two and a half years of watching him. That's just kind of what I pick up. You know, he's like making fart jokes in the team interviews. And so he just doesn't seem like he's just on that mature level that you have to be to su succeed at this level. Sounds like uh, but, someone I'd like to hang out. One of my good friends that I would never trust for anything important, but seems like an all right guy. Love yeah, nothing wrong to hang out with, but <laughs> nothing wrong with a good fart joke here and there. But <laughs> pulling up the that leads me to this though. Leading, you know, my last thing I got for you really is pulling up this this depth chart on our our lads. You mentioned Kenneth Murray, which is a signing I don't approve of. It doesn't sound like you do either. Cedric Ray's a nice pickup in the fourth round, yeah. running hit linebacker, but he's probably yep. a year away. Forgive yep. me, I don't know of an in-depth scouting report on Jack Gibbons, but <laughs> second level of this defense is concerning. Yeah, and I think one of the realities going into the year is the Titans couldn't overhaul the complete roster Can't in one yeah. offseason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they need next offseason, they need another draft, another free agency cycle. I think that's what they need. Right now, Jack Gibbons is set to be the starter, and Titans fans yeah. hate that because he's an unathletic linebacker. Now, <laughs> every intangible that you can have it like smart, disciplined, physical, gets guys lined up, knows everything about the playbook. Like the linebacker coach, Frank Bush, who's been coaching in the NFL for 20 years now, he said Jack Gibbons is our leader out there. And Kenneth Murray, again, I hate to be rude, but, you know, uh, upstairs, Kenneth Murray isn't the guy you want lining everybody up no. and calling no. the plays and, you know, being the voice of the defense. Kenneth Murray is the dog you want to let off the chain and just let him go. You know what I mean? So, like... I agree. You I agree. Like it's like the weakest part of the team, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mentioned football philosophy earlier. You guys can, and I know Brian covering San Francisco, they have proven this, you know, potentially wrong. But I think I would rather stack the pass rush in the secondary and have mediocre linebackers. And I think we can get it done if the top and the bottom are good. I think Kansas City has shown us that. They've mid-round picks and scrap heap guys. And, like, I'm more focused on, on the line in the secondary, and I think we can fill in, like, like at running back. To me, linebacker is kind of the running back of the defense. I can find value there without value, at high value assets. Like, I can get something done there. But there's also a line where if you're so poor at that position, it's going to be kind of hard to overcome. And I think the Titans are there, but the reality is the right side of the O-line, the linebackers, the interior D-line, the Titans just didn't have the resources to fix yeah. all of that, along with left tackle, wide receiver, cornerback. So I think these are what kind of slots the Titans over under in the win total and what they can do. But I agree, the inside linebacker spot is wanting, and I think that's something they'll have to focus on next year to pair somebody with Ced – I like Cedric Gray. I think he could be a good third-down linebacker for him early with the instincts and pass coverage, being a former safety, all of that. But, yeah, it's it's definitely a weak spot, and I think that it won't get fixed this year anytime soon. Yeah, uh, just knowing the 49ers, Rand Carthon, uh, I think Cedric Gray is right along that line of those 49ers mid-round draft picks that can turn. Yeah, I'm high on him. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, I, I would buy uh, that stock right now for sure. Uh, I appreciate the time, Tyler. we got to let you go, but uh, i, I got to nail you down on something. What are your predict predictions here for the Titans in the AFC South? Our friends at FanDuel, six and a half wins over under. How do you like them to finish this year in 2024? I have a hard time believing that with all the changes the Titans made and the talent that they've added, this roster is easily more talented than last year's. I have a hard time believing that the Titans don't win more games than they won last year. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So I'm hammering that over. I think the Titans are a seven to 10 win team, floor and ceiling. If things go right, if things go wrong, if they go wrong, I think they win seven. If it goes completely right, I think they win 10. But ultimately, I would say I think the Titans win eight games this year and sit just outside of, of the playoff uh, playoff picture. With that, If they get to nine wins, I think they can make a wild card spot. So it'll be right in there. But right now, if I had to say, I would go with eight because um, I don't think they're going to get much out of second-round pick to Vondre Sweat. We didn't talk about that, but I hated that pick. 
Um, yeah, I'm a big I got, right. I got a lot of pushback from people, and I still am. Uh, a lot, a lot of things said to me about not liking that pick, but without having your second round pick make a big impact, which I don't think he will, and some of the holes that we've discussed today, I think eight wins sounds about right. Well, hey, if you're not going to have good linebackers, have a 390 pound defensive tackle to keep uh, pl to keep players away from those linebackers. Stop the run and nickel. I mean, it, it does make sense. And and look, you know, Sweat has Vita Vea, Dexter Lawrence type potential. But the work he's already missed all of summer practices, uh, like it's just, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, fighting we're, over weight clauses in his contract. It just, you yeah. know, it, to me, it, there's there's too many red flags. But they bet on talent, and and we'll see how it goes. That is Tyler Rowland at Tic Tac Titans. You can find him every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, hosting Locked On Titans. Uh, I love chatting with you, Tyler. And you're always fired up for it, and appreciate the time today. And uh, have a good season, man. Let's talk to you again sometime soon. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do a check-in later. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. Matt and I are back tomorrow. Right? Actually, I back tomorrow. Matt on vacation. Talk to you right here. Peacock and Williamson.